Well, hi guys, Samantha here with Lone Crow Adventures, the channel where we talk about all things camping, hiking, and backpacking. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you 10 mistakes that can destroy your gear on a backpacking trip. Let's go. The first mistake that a lot of backpackers make is one that you might not even notice for a few days into your trip. And then by the time you notice it, it's too late. And what that is, is storing your fuel canister inside of your cook pot. Even some of the higher end systems like the MSR reactor is designed to be fully self-contained. It carries the burner inside of it and allows enough room for you to store your fuel canister right in there. Now, why is this a bad idea? A little thing called rust. Now, if you think about how you use your stove, you boil your water, you have your meal, you pack everything back up, and then you set this down inside. Even if you've thoroughly dried that pot, there's still some moisture that's going to build up in there, and the rims on these things have a real bad tendency to rust. And you'd be surprised at how fast the rust can start on these fuel canisters. This fuel canister was used twice, and you can see the rust is already starting. Once the rust starts on the canister, it goes to your pot. And then your pot's toast, unless of course you catch it early and have something to scour it off with, or if you have access to some harsh chemicals, which let's face it, most of us on the trail don't have access to. In order to avoid having rust transfer from the fuel canister to your favorite cook pot, just use a nice thin sheet of felt or even a thin sheet of cotton to put down as a barrier between the pot and the rim of this canister. That way you're not gonna get rust transferring from one surface to another. The second backpacking gear destroying mistake is this guy right here. That's right, your standard bug spray or DEET based product. DEET is terrible. It destroys plastics and it destroys nylon. So if this stuff bursts in your pack or gets on any of your gear, like your tent, it's just gonna eat through it and it's gonna melt it away and you're gonna end up with a big time gear failure on your hands. I understand bugs are annoying, especially mosquitoes and even worse are those ticks. And you're gonna wanna have some kind of bug protection. In place of using a deep base product, I definitely recommend using permethrin. This is made by a brand called Sawyer. And the benefit of using a chemical like this is that you pre-treat all of your gear and your clothing before you head out on the trail. So you don't actually have to lug this big heavy thing with you. And it works for several weeks and it can even last through up to five wash cycles with soap. And it's going to deter all of those pests. And that way you don't have to worry about carrying DEET in your pack. But if you're that person who just doesn't want to leave the bug spray behind, maybe you're even a new backpacker and it just makes you feel comfortable to carry it, I would definitely recommend that you store this in its own dry bag, just in case this can gets perforated, just in case the sprayer goes off. And I would even argue that you take this dry bag and you put it on one of the pockets on the outside of your pack, just for that added layer of protection. As annoying as mosquitoes are, a melted tent fly is 10 times more annoying. The third mistake is potentially a deadly mistake, and that is not taking proper care of your water filter, especially if you're filtering water sources that are questionable, that are murky or muddy. You definitely want to make the time in your day to back flush your filter. And what that means is that you take clean water that you've already filtered and you pass it down through the clean end of the filter, and you're going to try to flush as much of that gunk out of there as possible. If you don't, you're going to end up with backups in your water filter and eventually it's not going to work, which is really going to put you in a pickle. Other important thing to remember about water filters is that they do retain some water and moisture on the inside of them after you're done filtering your water. So if you're going to jump into some temperatures that are dipping down below freezing, you want to throw this guy in a dry bag and pop it into your sleeping bag with you while you're sleeping because you don't want this to freeze overnight. It's going to crack and then you're not going to be able to filter water. Since we're talking water, let's jump right into mistake number four, which is improper storage of hydration bladders. There are two big areas where we can run into problems. The first is when you're at camp. 
lot of people unpack their pack they have the hydration bladder still in the pack and something will rest on top of the bite valve of the hydration bladder which will cause it to leak you'll end up with less water in the morning but you could also end up getting some of your gear wet which is not a good idea the big problem with the hydration bladder is actually how you store and care for it once you get home from your trip. You want to make sure that it's dried out as much as possible, including all the tubing, because you don't want mildew to grow in there. And you have to be careful not to store it under a lot of other gear items. So if you throw it into a bin and a bunch of stuff on top of it, there's a huge chance that you're going to perf that water bladder. And the next time that you want to go out, you're going to have a leaky bladder. To avoid that, make sure that when you're packing your stuff up, just lay the water bladder flat along the top. Don't crunch it up or try to compress it into a small space. Just leave it nice and flat on the top of your gear so that way the next time that you go for a backpacking trip, you're going to have a nice full bladder. Backpacking mistake number five, and that is improper storage of down sleeping bags or down quilts. And I see this all the time. They come with this nice handy compression sack. And it's fine if you want to throw this in the compression sack so that you can get it into your pack. That's fine. The problem is when you get home, you don't want to take this and throw it into your closet or toss it in the garage and leave it in this compressed state. You want to take it out of the bag and you want to let that down get nice and lofty in between uses. If you don't, over time, your sleeping bag or your quilt is actually going to lose a lot of its insulative properties because that down is going to stay compressed over time, which means the next time that you unpack it, it's not going to loft up as much and it's not going to hold and retain as much heat. Now, most sleeping bags have a sleeping bag hanging loop like this. So you can just toss this on a hook in your closet and this way, two things happen. The down stays nice and lofty in between uses and if there's any moisture at all that's built up in here it allows it to get a lot of air so that it can air right out. So definitely hang, don't compress your down products. Backpacking mistake number six which is relying on a pack cover. Now, if you've never seen a pack cover before this little day pack actually comes with an integrated pack cover and basically it is a little raincoat for your pack. Now don't get me wrong having a pack cover is definitely better than nothing and it does cover the entire pack and in the case of this little day pack it's totally appropriate because if I run into a light rain I can throw that on and my gear inside is going to stay dry but I would never rely on just a pack cover for a multi-day trip. As you're hiking through heavy rain or sustained rain, your straps are going to get wet and eventually that moisture and water is going to bleed into the inside of your pack and create a flood inside of there. So do not rely on just a pack cover because eventually it will fail you. Instead of using a pack cover, I definitely recommend using a pack liner, which is essentially a giant dry bag that is the size of your pack that you then pack all your items into to keep any moisture out. And I further also recommend that you use some smaller dry bags to pack things that particularly would be damaging if they got wet. And this includes socks because you do not want to go on trail with wet feet and any kind of electronics. Pack them in their own little dry bag inside of the pack liner and that way you're doubly protected and that leads us into backpacking mistake number seven which is improper storage of liquid based fuels so this includes your white gas and your alcohol based fuels so this is an example of an alcohol based fuel and this is the original container that it came in and these containers are notorious for rust and that rust develops really quick just like on those fuel canisters and it can transfer to other gear inside of your pack and it can also cause this container to rust out completely and then you have a leak problem on your hands so i definitely recommend if you want to use an alcohol stove that you take this alcohol and you transfer it to some type of a receptacle that's going to have a rubberized gasket so i've transferred the fuel into this single walled but thick walled stainless steel canister and this features 
a screw top with a rubberized gasket. So you can be guaranteed that when you screw this on and you get it nice and tight, you're not going to get any leaks. And this may seem like common sense, but I'm just going to throw it out there. When you're using different types of fuel, make sure that you have dedicated fuel containers. So if you have denatured alcohol that you use for alcohol stoves, have one specific container that you use for that. And if you switch to a white gas for the winter, have another fuel canister for that. Don't just dump out one type of fuel and then dump another one in. Because with some of these white gas stoves, even if there's trace amounts of other fuel inside of that canister, it could toast your expensive stove. Backpacking mistake number eight, which is don't exceed the weight capacity on your pack. This could be a mistake, especially a lot of new backpackers make, because they have a tendency to carry a lot of stuff that they really don't need because they just haven't figured out their gear loadout yet. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's a learning curve. We've all been through it but you definitely want to pay attention to the weight capacity on your pack especially if you're transitioning from a traditional pack and you're trying to get to a more lightweight model some of these frameless lightweight packs can only handle about 25 pounds so if you can't get your base weight down to about 10 or 15 pounds definitely avoid going that lightweight option because you're probably going to exceed the weight capacity on some of those ultralight bags and you could result in damaging a really expensive pack. Backpacking mistake number nine, don't leave your gear unattended and be conscientious of the wildlife that's in the area. So everyone's probably pretty familiar with how you need to store your food, especially if you're backpacking in bear country. But sometimes we have a tendency to be a little bit more lax in the absence of bears. And I know I have fallen victim to this. I made camp for a couple of days and I was headed out for the afternoon to do some kayaking and some fishing. I had my pack, I hung it up in a tree and I thought everything would be fine. When I got back, there was a little red squirrel that totally just decimated my pack. It was completely unusable after that. It was a series of duct tape and paracord trying to hold this pack together for the rest of the trip. It was ridiculous. And when I went down to Texas, I did some camping in Big Bend National Park. The plan was to set up and make camp for a couple days and then do a series of day hikes throughout the park. Well, we had to change that plan because when we got down there, there were wild javelinas, which are basically wild boars, and they just would destroy your stuff. And thankfully, the rangers came around when everyone got set up to warn them about these terrifying javelinas which are actually really cute animals so we had to change our plan and in the morning we had to pack everything up and bring it with us and drag our gear around with us the entire park because if we hadn't those little pigs would have come and totally destroyed our gear so be really conscientious of the wildlife even when you're not camping in bear country because you're in the critters forest and the critters will teach you a lesson and that leads us into the final backpacking mistake not taking proper care of your gear once you get home after your trip. When you get home, definitely make sure that you take your sleeping bags or quilts, your tent, tarps, or hammocks. Make sure that those gear items are dry. There is nothing worse than packing up a soggy tent and then coming back to it a few weeks later to realize that mildew has started to grow rampant on your gear. Definitely take the time when you get home from a backpacking trip to inspect all your gear, make sure that there are no rips, tears, or any other malfunctions in it, and then store it properly, letting it air out. So this way you're going to get the longest longevity and proper use of your gear. I hope these tips help you to avoid gear failures on your future trips. Now, if you're wondering how to avoid buying the wrong backpack and how to pick the right one, click on over here. I've got a great video on that. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do so now. There's some great content on here I know you'll enjoy. Until next time, folks, we'll see you on the trail.